My name is Jenny Moeller. I work with New Day Foundation. I'm one of the program specialists there. So my late husband was diagnosed with cancer when our son was five months old in 2011. And we went through chemo and radiation and surgeries and the whole thing. Thought things were working, they weren't. And he passed away on January 9th of 2013. I know cancer. Cancer, it, it clouds a lot. Um, and even 11 years out, there are still moments that it catches me. So being able to, to look at, at these families that are where, you know, they're where I was 11 years ago, 12, 12 years ago, and be able to say, I, I get it, it creates this natural bond. Um, for me, it also allows me to continue Aaron's legacy. I feel like I'm giving back. I'm taking this really, really painful, horrible story that I would never wish on anyone, and it's being used to bring at least a little bit of hope to someone else who's in there. It's, it's hard when you're going through cancer. You know, when, when someone is healed on earth and there are no evidence of disease, Everyone is like, God is good, he's healed, he's so great, won't he do it, right? But that same response doesn't happen when someone is healed on the other side, right? And my sister-in-law, when Aaron passed away, I was talking with her about that, like we prayed and prayed and prayed and he was healed as a child of cancer, like why didn't God do it again? Like we have this baby now, like what are we supposed to do? And she reminded me that God healed him more completely than any of us had the courage to pray. And that has been a really beautiful mindset, but still leaves space for questions. It took me a while to realize that joy and grief can coexist, because they do seem opposite. They seem like either you're smiling and you're happy and like woo woo woo, or you're crying and you are in the fetal position laying on the floor. And I think part of that was the gift of having a tiny kiddo when I was going through my deepest grief. Adults, when we grieve, we tend to have longer periods. It stays with us, we think about it, we process it. Kids, I mean, I would take my son to the park and we're having a great time, we're on the swing, we're playing, I'm pushing him and then all of a sudden he'll be like, I really miss my daddy, I wish he wasn't dead and I'm like trying not to cry behind him as I'm pushing him. Two seconds later, he's like, can we go on the slide now? And he's off and running. And so it was such a beautiful practice for me to try to keep step with him. We live in a broken world. So broken things happen. I'm breathing, everything hurts, <laughs> but I'm breathing. Okay, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? I have clothes on my body and I got to choose what clothes I got to put on. Okay, okay, this all still sucks over here. But here are some, some areas where I can see love, I can see hope, I can see it's not all 100% terrible. 99% maybe, but there's that 1% and that's enough to start grabbing onto. So when you feel like you are at the bottom, there's no way out, there's no ladder out of the pit, there's no even just spaces in the dirt to dig your fingernails in to start that climb out. There are other people who can say, I've, I've been there. I have been in that space. And here are some ways that have helped me because it's so powerful. When we share the scars of our story, for other people to go, I have a matching scar. <laughs> I, I, mine looks like yours, but it's not quite as healed. How did you get there? 